So according to the Wall Street Journal, which I have the article pulled up on the screen and it will be the first link in the description, uh, they, the ATF has actually raided Polymer 80. Now Polymer 80 is again a company that does not manufacture far firearms. Um, as far as I'm aware, they might sell like complete firearms, but uh, mostly what they're known for is of course selling Polymer 80 kits, specifically Glock kits. Now, I did not purchase this from them, but this is a Polymer 80 Glock. I've never purchased something from Polymer 80, but I do own a, a singular Polymer 80 firearm. In the state of Washington, you can't have them shipped uh, directly to you, so you have to actually purchase them from someone in Washington state or get them from an FFL in Washington state, which is what I did. Um, so it's a little bit funky here, but generally speaking, you can have a Polymer 80, just a 80% gun, which again is not a firearm. The ATF does not consider them a firearm. The ATF has not said that they're going to change their definitions of what is or is not a firearm. What it seems like they're going after is a very specific kit. So ATF raided the facility, they took records, and I'm not sure if they actually seized any products, but basically the main problem that they had was that they said uh, Polymer 80 was not paying taxes and they were selling complete guns or what they considered complete firearms um, without any background checks, which is of course illegal to do. But the specific kit that they had an issue with, with was I believe the buy, build, shoot kit. What they had an issue with was if you buy, again, the not firearm with a bunch of other parts in a kit so that you could put it all together in one easy, convenient stop, then they magically consider that a firearm. Now again, when you buy an 80% firearm or an 80% um, lower or anything like that and it's stripped, it's not anything. It's just a hunk of plastic and the ATF still, as far as I'm aware, does not consider them a firearm until you modify it. You take those extra steps because there is not a lot of material, but there is several different steps you have to do to get a polymer 80 frame to accept all of your Glock kits and to start working properly. So what I find kind of odd about the whole thing is that if you buy a lower by itself, of course a polymer 80 lower, so it's not a firearm, but what if you were to order a slide and trigger kit and lower parts kit in the same box, then they consider it magically a firearm, even though you haven't changed anything on the strip receiver to actually make it a, able to accept those parts. So the whole thing to me right off the bat seems very, very fishy. And I think it's a little bit more indicative of things to come. And especially with the theoretical new administration that's gonna be in and politicians behind the ATF and some of their decisions. I think that they are going to be going after these quote unquote ghost guns that of course you can 3D print your own firearms in your basement. It's really inexpensive. You can buy a fairly decent 3D printer for about 300 bucks and start printing off your own lowers, um, like a polymer 80 type stuff or just Glock frames, Glock magazines, whatever you want, you can pretty much make it all in your basement. And again, that's legal. You can make your own firearms here in the United States, but they are specifically trying to get rid of you know, these quote unquote ghost guns because they're not serialized, even though I would warrant that they're they're very minorly used in crimes and such like that because it's much easier just to go out and buy something, even if it's illegally buying from someone, just buying something that's already there rather than, you know, having to buy tools and stuff to make your own firearms. But I'm sure there are some exceptions to that rule and I'm sure some polymer 80 or 80% frames have been used in criminal activities and that sort of thing. But again, uh, going after law abiding citizens for the actions of criminals isn't really the best uh, way of going about things in my opinion. Now, uh, about the ATF, in my opinion, they are basically state sponsored thugs. They're a really, really terrible organization. If you look what they've done throughout the past 30 or 40 years, just look throughout their history, they're a pretty horrible organization and I'm sure there are some decent people in the ATF, for instance. Uh, I have my Form 1 suppressor, which I already have approved from the ATF, so I'm all good there. And you know, so I'm allowed to build my own Form 1 suppressors and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, as long as I'm filling out the proper paperwork and doing all that sort of stuff, which I have. Um, and so I'm sure there are some decent people there, but by and large, the ATF is a terrible organization that is very heavily politically motivated. And so right now it's going to be politi politically expedient to go after these sort of, again, ghost guns. They're not guns because even by the ATF's own definition, they are not firearms. But I believe I did mention it earlier when they ATF raided uh, Polymer 80 in Nevada, they took records. Now, I've never bought anything from Polymer 80, so I'm not worried about that personally, but they could, the ATF could start raiding 
other polymer 80 sellers you know there's lots of different websites where you can buy polymer 80 both frames and kits and everything and now remember the atf specifically went after the buy build shoot kit which is basically all the other parts that you need to complete your frame once you've actually turned that frame into a firearm again just having all those extra pieces in a box doesn't magically convert that frame into a firearm you have to manually put in the work drill the holes remove the excess material do all the finishing work to that frame having the parts in the box does not change that whatsoever like i said this is more indicative of what's to come with the atf and i'm sure they will be trying to crack down on these sorts of things more and more in the future and so polymer 80 is the biggest one they're the most well known and but i know that there are other websites doing this as well so even if you did not order from polymer 80 the atf could still have your information if they decide to raid other facilities so um and another interesting thing is if they are taking your information and let's say you were somebody who bought legally bought at the time a buy build shoot kit from polymer 80 and then the next week the ATF shows up at your doorstep because you illegally purchased a firearm, which to me would be very, very extreme, but that is something that could theoretically happen uh, because they do have your information, they know what you bought, they know when you bought it, they know where you had it shipped. So if you have anything Polymer 80 shipped, even if it's just a frame without not the buy, build, shoot kit, even if you just had a frame sent to your door, the ATF now has your information, which again, in the future, if they're like, uh, all 80% firearms need to be turned in or something really extreme like that, they have your address, your name, probably your credit card info, all that other fun stuff. Uh, so really, really crazy sorts of things. I think this is uh, fairly unprecedented uh, considering how many 80% frames are out there and how many people have bought them and how many people have bought them from Polymer 80 specifically. And again, I have no idea what actual access the ATF has to all the records. So again, if you've bought something from Polymer 80, I don't know if the ATF have, has your information, but that is kind of what the Wall Street Journal is alluding to. So that's about it for the information part of the video. Again, if you guys wanna do anything about it, really the only things you can do is contact your state representatives, your congressmen, anyone you can who has any sort of political power, especially if they are more in our favor, if they're more Republican or right wing or whatever you wanna call it, if they're more in favor of guns, uh, give them a call, let them know what's happening, tweet at them, send them emails, call their office, whatever you have to do uh, to let them know that you don't want the ATF to make you a felon overnight, you should probably do. Because again, it's in my personal interest as I do own a Polymer 80 that I purchased legally <laughs> at the time, I suppose. Um, but it is something that you guys want to keep in mind and it is something that you guys should at least, I suppose we should all be trying to do something to uh, hold on to our rights as long as possible. So again, that's about it for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I don't plan on doing a lot of these. This is just something that just popped up right before I went to bed. So I thought I'm just going to record a quick video, upload it and say my piece on it. So that's about it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace off.